Hello, Floss Tube. My name is Candy, and I am the 614 Stitcher here on YouTube. This is my very first YouTube Floss Tube. Um, I have been actually wanting to record a Floss Tube for a few months and kept waiting for the perfect time and for everything to be perfect. But in this year, 2020, there's not too much of anything that is going to be perfect. So, I chose today, December the 1st, to be my very first floss tube. Um, a little bit about me. I am multi -craftual. I love that term when it first started coming out. Um, I have uh, done quite a few different kinds of crafting. Um, I actually didn't come into crafting until I was in older. Um, I ended up having empty nest syndrome and I started with ceramics actually um, and painting and I did that for um, a number of years and I still have quite a few pieces. Um, that need to be done and I actually have finished pieces that I display uh, all throughout the year in my home. Um, and then I moved into card making and quilting and I started with County Cross Stitch in January of 2019. I um, watched Fat Quarter Shop on their Friday um, post. They do live videos on Fridays for their quilting. Um, and as it turned out that year, they were, they had just finished up in 2018, um, a chart by Lori Holt called Farm Girl Vintage. And so when they came out with, when Lori Hope came out with Quilter's Cottage to be started in January of 2019, I jumped on the bandwagon and I have not looked back since. I actually um, picked up a counted cross stitch little bitty chart from Michael's. Um, I used to go um, on vacation every year to the beach, and the beach is wonderful. Um, and in the daytime, there's plenty of activities to do. However, at night, um, i not big into TV. I don't watch a lot of TV, and so it was uh, a little boring for me at night. So I went to Michael's, picked up this little... A rainbow peace symbol. I actually have it still and I need to find it. Um, I picked up that and I had my best friend give me a 20 minute tutorial on how to cross stitch and I took that <laughs> cross stitch with me to the beach that year. I did finish it at the beach. Um, the back is unbelievable. Um, and when I compare the stitching that I do now to that stitching, I cannot believe that uh, I didn't try better to make the back look more uh, strings just here, there, and everywhere. Um, from the back, you could not tell that it was just a peace sign um, stitched on the front. Now the front is beautiful, but the back whew, was really bad. Um, and after that initial cross stitch little bitty chart, I um, didn't pick it up again. I didn't come back saying, oh yeah, I'm going to be a cross stitcher for a couple of different reasons. Um, I think the 20 minute tutorial um, although, you know, she did a good job at the time with the time that I had, I, there wasn't very many, um, there wasn't very much um, knowledge to it. Um, and then, you know, life gets 
moving and you move on and you come back uh, to things that interest you. So when um, Kimberly Jolly said that they were going to do a stitch along on this Quilter's Cottage piece, I was like, I am in. Bought the whole kit. Um, and then I realized that I'm very slow at stitching. Um, the the fabric for that particular chart was on a 10 count Ada. And so I thought, woo, I'll be able to really move along really fast with it. And um, it won't take me very much time at all. And by the time they finished it, I was still working on the lettering, which is the first part of the chart. Um, and it probably took me another four months after they had initially finished it <laughs> to finish it. Um, I have not fully finished it, although I my plan is to fully finish it into a pillow. Right now it is pinned to a design board and it sits in my living room. Um, and I am very proud of the fact that I just stepped out of the box and went ahead on and did it. I um, did not grow up with crafting. Um, I did not see other people crafting at all. Um, there were no ladies in the neighborhood doing any kinds of crafts or um, anything like that. So for me, I did not discover um, real crafting and artistry in needlework, quilts, ceramics, any of that until I was uh, much older. <laughs> um, but it, um, it has been such a wonderful experience with doing um, all of the different types of crafts that I have dabbled in. I um, am thankful for for the, those crafts because um, especially this year, it has been um, almost like a saving grace um, to keep my mind occupied and to keep me positive and thinking um, clearly. Um, And so that's basically my story, um, kind of in a nutshell. I um, love to try different things, although I say that and then I'm like, well, I like to try different things. But um, a lot of times I let my own self-confidence get in the way of things that I could do. And so um, with that, cross-stitch is also taught, helped me just step out of the box a little bit. Um, I do live in central Ohio. Um, and my actual, uh, not, <laughs> we've coined this phrase, my actual not so close to home needle workshop is Keepsakes in Sharonville, Ohio. Um, I love keepsakes, and if you are looking for a shop, if you don't have a local LNS, Miss Barbara will be happy to help you. They are um, a wonderful shop. I had had an, a different experience at a different needle workshop, um, and literally with one phone call to keepsakes, um, that was all changed. Um, and they have been my local needle workshop uh, for over a year now. I actually came to um, find keepsakes via way of Kimberly Jolly. She, um, at the time, was watching Pam and Steph. And, um, you know, every week when she had her floss tube, she would tell about different floss tubers she was watching. And so um, I decided to go ahead and watch 
them also. And that's how I think a lot of floss tubers find different shops and different people to stitch with. It's virtually by word of mouth. Um, so in watching um, Pam and Steph's video, uh, they are just keep stitching. Um, I realized that they were right here in the same state as me. Um, and they talked about keepsakes and how wonderful it was. And I actually ended up calling them because um, right at that time, Ball Point Needles came out. Um, and I had contacted a different shop about them and they were not um, very interested in helping me or even ordering the needles for me. Um, and within 15 minutes of calling and speaking to Miss Barbara, I received a second call back that the needles had been ordered. Um, and when they get into the shop, they would contact me and they would ship them to Columbus for me. And I was overwhelmed at the mere fact that, that they, without seeing me, without knowing me, just had such great um, customer service um, because I, I can spend money, but if you aren't going to uh, be receptive, um, then I can spend my money someplace else. Um, and so I have been um, so happy and pleased and have met so many wonderful people through Keepsakes. Um, and not just um, at that shop locally, I uh, actually got to experience earlier this year my very first um, Stitch Away um, retreat, and I was just amazed um, at how a group of women um, could come together. There was no arguing. There was no bickering. We ate too much. We laughed a lot. Um, it was wonderful. Um, and, and that was not um, an over-exaggeration because a lot of people were talking about it. Um, literally, I walked in I went down to the shop to pick up my ballpoint needles so that I could figure out where this shop was in relation to where I live. And um, her name is Spoonaroonie Stitcher on Instagram, um, Jen Grimes. Literally within an hour, plopped down the, um, the form for me to fill out to uh, make the reservation for Stitch Away. And it was the best time I have had in a long time um, to be away and to be with like-minded women, people um, was just incredible for me. Um, you know, this year has changed a whole lot of things, but um, Hopefully someday we will be able to get back to going to retreats and stitching together without masks. Um, because, you know, when you when stitchers get together, they get together and can be together for as, as long as the stitching is going and as long as the conversation is good. Um, and so for me that grew up not, seeing that and to talk to other women who have been doing all kinds of um, crafting and uh, other things, it is amazing to me all of the different things that you can learn from people. And a lot of the um, cross-stitchers that I have met are just so warm and welcoming, 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 yeah, welcoming welcoming okay um and i really appreciate that especially me coming in being very naive to um fabric like ada was all i ever thought about um i never thought even about colored ada um 
never in a million years, over dyed flosses and how if you stitch this way, it'll do this and stitch it this way, it'll do that. I would have never in a million years um, thought that I would ever uh, venture away from those um, you know, Ada or and uh, DMC floss. Now, don't get me wrong. I still stitch on Ada, and I still use DMC. Um, but I, I am more open. Um, it doesn't. Everything doesn't just have to be stitched on fourteen count Ada, um, and everything doesn't have to just be stitched with DMC. And. Um, I think now it's time for me to move into some of the items, um, some of the pieces that I have been working on. Um, I have been working on, and I meant to pull the chart. This is a, this is actually going to be a gift, and I stitch on it every single day right now. Um, it is a gift for someone very special, and it is... Um, Tracy Horner of Ink Circles, and this is the stained glass pattern Christmas Cactus. And I love this piece. I have been stitching on this since um, September. It's on a 16 count Ada with the called for DMC colors. This was my first um, endeavor into 16 count, and I absolutely love it. Um, when I stitch this pattern, I stitch all the black first because I've seen other stitchers on floss tube stitching, um, ink circles patterns and they always say, you know, do the black and then do the coloring in. And so I didn't really understand that, but I knew to stitch all the black and then go back and do it. And to see this pattern come to life, it is like um, it is a real Christmas cactus coming to life. And I simply love it. And um, it won't be this next year or maybe I'll start it again. But I have to stitch one for my own self also because it is so beautiful. Um... The next piece, um, this is actually a finish, and it is the Hands-On Design and Priscilla Blaine, Blaine um, collaboration, um, Mary Chalk Full. Um, and I did stitch this on 14 count Wichell um, Black Ada with the called for threads. The uh, white is chalk. Um, the red is uh, licorice red. Um, and I love this piece. And I um, make all of the pieces that I stitch representative of my um, ethnicity. I, <laughs> I uh, have always, in the couple of charts that I've done with people, I've always changed the skin color. Um, and that's just what I do so that when I hang things up in my house, they represent um, who I am. So that's piece number two. I actually have, um, I'm going to finish this piece um, before my next floss tube, but I'm not going to finish it into a pillow. Um, I follow a cross, uh, a quilter on um YouTube also, or her name is Pat Sloan. And she has been taking smalls like this and putting um, quilters cotton fabric around them and making them into hangers. Um, and that is what I'm gonna plan on doing with this so that when I have um, my Christmas decorations up, it can be hanging um, like a picture also, but it'll have Christmas fabric around it. Um, I also just finished, um, I started cross-stitching right as the whole Lizzie Kate retirement one, two, three stitch 
thing incident was going on. So um, I liked, I still do like Lizzie Kate patterns. And so I um, had purchased a few of them um, before all of that. And um, I just finished, this one is called um, Away in the Manger. And it's stitched on a 14 count um, Ada. Uh, and I think it's lamb's wool, if I remember correctly. The next time I do this, I'm going to make sure I take better notes. Um, and I use the called for colors. Um, and I am going to do the same um, finishing idea with putting the um, fabric on it and, and making it into a hanger. Um, I am new to finishing. Um, I've only, f I have lots of things done, um, but I have not finished um, them all. Um, I still work a full-time job and family, and then now that, you know, I'm working from home, um, that makes things a little different. Um, but I am looking forward to starting the whole finishing routine. Um, I think it, um, it would be sad to, to do all of that work, um, have beautiful stitching, and then to have it sit in a box or um, under a bed. Um, so that is definitely not who I am. Um, so I, I do look forward to the, uh, the chance to, uh, take some time and actually get things finished so that I can display them. Um, my children and grandchildren love, uh, to see what I'm working on. And so I would love to be able to show them those items also when they're finished. So. Um, I do have one more that I'm going to show that I'm so very proud of. So this is called Sorry about the plastic bag. Um, Henzite. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But this is um, Love Ohio, and I am in Ohio. However, I have two children, um, adult children that live in Texas. And so I am making them little ornaments to send them for Christmas. Um, and this is the first one. And so I actually um, talked to Miss Barbara, and she gave me a great finishing idea for this. And so I'm going to be working on getting these finished um, this week so that I can get them in the mail because the mail is running really strange and slow, um, and I want to make sure that they have them in time for Christmas. Um, and it is stitched actually on a 16 count fabric flare remnant. One of the great things about going to a local needle shop, at least for me, is to go through the fabric remnants basket. Um, you find really nice cuts of fabric um, that are uh, a little less expensive because they're a piece of remnant um, and even a small could be stitched on it um, and finished just fine on it um, and that is actually where I did get these pieces I have a couple of them um, and so you know if you do have a local shop near you see if they actually save pieces of the cutoff remnants from the fabric that they cut off um, if they cut it and the person doesn't like it um, you know it may end up in the remnant basket and it would like I would have never um, thought to purchase a whole roll or a whole fat quarter of this fabric just to stitch this on but it was a different, um, you know, it's a different look and it gives a little bit of movement to the pe to the stitching. And so it was great to have the opportunity to spend, you know, one or two dollars on a, this little piece of fabric to try it out before spending more um, to realize, no, I can stitch on that 16 count or, you know, the holes are too small or anything like that. So... Check out the remnant basket at your local needle workshop. 
you'll be surprised what you can find in there. Um, so now I'm gonna go and move on to haul because of course you have to have haul. So this is one of those little remnant pieces. Um, it's actually, and I've never stitched on 32 count. This is a piece of 32 count. Um, they did not give me the name. I actually think that um, one of the la lovely ladies that work at the shop dyed this, Miss um, Susan. But this piece of fabric was $1. Um, and I could spend a dollar to try out a piece of fabric. Um, I thought it was an awesome deal, and so therefore, it came home with me. Um, I also purchased a 18-count um, dwarf. And I started stitching last year um, the Snowman Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. And I started it on 14 count and quickly uh, set it aside because I just thought it was way too big. Um, it was going, the wall space, the framing, I, I'm not um, a big into framing pieces kind of person. And so I could not imagine after working on that very first chart, um, I have the whole series um, that I was going to even finish it, met or less try to frame it and put it up somewhere. So I'm going to start it over again, um, in 2021 and I'm going to use the 18 count dwarf and we'll see how it goes with that. So another piece of remnant that I got out of the basket was this 10 count, um, white Ada, and I am actually going to be using this to stitch um, a couple of Christmas ornaments, I'm hoping really quickly, uh, for um, a few family members that I need to give a little gift to. Um, and and I'll show you the chart that's going to go with this in, in a second. And then once again, another piece of the fabric flare that I found. Um, I am in the Fabric of the Month Club with Fortnite Fabrics, and I really, really um, enjoy their fabrics. They're very nice. Um, I've only stitched a couple of pieces of a couple of pieces on the fabric, but I I do love it, and the colors are so vibrant and. Um, it's not hard. The fabric is not hard. Well, this is um, November's fabric of the month, and I think that is um, so. It does look a little lighter um, in the camera than what it actually is, but the name of the fabric is called Mum as in the flowers. So it was a fall um, theme that they have. They do a flower theme and a mushroom theme. Um, and I am actually in both those clubs. So this is a 16 count mum by Fortnite Fabrics. Yeah, that is my dog's nails you hear. He hears the wind and he keeps running to the door. No, go lay down. Sorry about the crinkling. I forgot to take this out before um, I started the camera. So this is the uh, the mushroom colorway. And that looks way lighter than what it actually is. Oh, that's much better. So this is a 16 count. Dryad's Saddle, Dryad Saddle. I've never heard of that mushroom, but that's what the card says. Um, it is a very nice 
um, neutral. It almost looks golden um, in real, you know, when I'm looking at it right here. It has a lot of modeling in it also, as you can see. They have very nice fabrics. I'm not sure if their Fabric of the Month Club is still open or accepting um, new buyers, purchasers. But you can check them out. They are on Facebook, um, and it is under Fortnite Fabrics, um, Derek and Christian. Um, I am also in what is called the um, Magazine Monthly. They just changed the name a little bit. Magazine Monthly Challenge group on Facebook, which is headed up by Carolyn Zook of C. Zook Stitch and Robin Hall of Birds. Bird's Eye Stitcher. Bird's Eye Stitcher. Um, and so I jumped into this group not having hardly maybe two magazines. Um, and I had people donate magazines to me and all of that. So um, the basis of that group is, is that you, you, for me, I uh, usually try to use uh, the magazine for the main challenge of the month. Um, and I can show you that form. So they have the form broken down into um, what the theme is. And so the theme for December is Winter Wonderland. Um, and I try to use a magazine for that particular challenge and then for the acrostic so this month the acrostic is snow thank goodness they went with a smaller word this month turkey was last month and it was a bear um but you you know you just match um what you want to those letters like most acrostics um the the good part for me is is that i am able to fit in whips or other things that I want to get finished during the month. So um, the stained glass Christmas cactus, I have had it on my acrostics list for three months, um, literally, and I've been stitching on it. Um, and I like this idea because it does help me move along instead of being a uh, monogamous stitcher. I have so many things that I want to start or I've, I have started. Um, I also like um, the utilization of the magazines also because there are some beautiful charts in magazines that I would have never um, known about um, because I don't really buy magazines. Well. So um, I did receive um, the uh, winter... Christmas issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. And I am here to tell you, don't um, let the name fool you with this magazine. I, I, I have been listening, listening to uh, Stitchers talk about this magazine and how great and wonderful it is. And all I kept thinking was, is I don't do Punch Needle. And I don't really want to spend my money on a magazine that's going to have punch that that I may end up not being able to find any cross stitch patterns in. Let me say it that way. Well, I was completely wrong and I now will be getting it every time that it comes out. This magazine is chock full of great patterns. Um and even the punch needle is beautiful, even though, and I'm not, that's not a new hobby that I'm trying to pick up. Um, but it's beautiful to look at. Um, and so therefore, it, it it will be great to have if someday down the line I decide to try punch needle. It won't be anytime soon, I don't think. Um, and one of the big uh, draws, I think, for me um 
as I try to become more of a finisher for my own pieces, is that Vana, um, the Twisted Stitcher, you all know her, she actually gives a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this cute little snowman ornament. And it is super cute. And there are, I mean, literally step-by-step -step instructions. As you can see, I have quite a few tagged um, and ready. <laughs> well, not ready, but definitely tagged, um, which um, I like to do. I am... Um, I am not a monogamous stitcher. I think it would be very easy for me to become one because it seems as though the more I stitch, I'm starting to get into bigger and bigger projects, which um, seem to, you know, not leave room, maybe is a better way to say it, um, for me to pick up um, another project. But I have worked out a system for that. And I'll fill you in when I get there in my plans. So, um, like I said, I went to my local needle workshop, my local, yeah, my, my LNS over the weekend um, with my mask on. Miss um, Barbara doesn't play. We all have to wear masks. Um, and so I wore my mask and I went to have some retail therapy um, for the Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Cyber Monday sale. Um, and I picked up a few little charts. Um, and this is Holly Jolly Holiday by Heart and Hand. And I really love all of her charts. I actually found a chart of hers that is probably 20 years old. Um, and I am stitching the Christmas ornaments out of it because I just love... Um, Cecilia Turner's charts. She actually has um, the red cardinal chart in the Punch Needle Primitive magazine, and I'm going to definitely stitch that also. Now, this one is an older one, I think. Um, it is Bent Creek, um, January Snows. And I am particularly fond of January and snowmen. Um, January is my birth month. And of course you can't not like snowmen. And so here's another one that I picked up. Sorry for the glare. And this is also a Bent Creek. And he is just the cutest snowman. And they actually give you the full alphabet in here. So that if you do want to turn it into a stocking, you can customize the name for it. Um, this next chart, I just happened upon it and had to have it. Um, it's Let's Find Rudolph. And this is what it looks like. And this chart um, is so pretty to me. With all, I love the word typography when they m put the words and make it into a picture. Um, I've seen this quite a few times done in cross stitch, and I had not seen where um, a reindeer had been done. And so I just, you know, the sale was there, I was there, I picked it up. Um, and this last chart that I purchased that keepsakes is called uh, Bless This House We Pray. Um, and I actually picked this chart up um, with the hopes of being able to stitch it when one of my children purchases their own home. Um, I think it would be a beautiful uh, housewarming gift. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I picked it up. I just thought that the saying, it says, bless this house, we pray. Lord, make it safe by night and day. Um, and in these days and times, we all need to be saying that prayer, in my opinion. So those are just some of the purchases. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move into plans. Um, so, like I said, I... Um, I actually follow, I'm on the Facebook group, Seasook Stitch, 
um, and I am in the monthly magazine challenge Facebook group also. And so, um, Carolyn is very funny. She goes through all these plans and does, you know, oh, I think I'm going to start this. And, and so she was doing um, a magazine flip through of just cross stitch, the winter edition. And she came across this chart um, and it's called the Pea Sampler. And she loves it. And then after I watched the video and picked up the magazine, I was like, oh, I love that too. And so now we're having a stitch along and it actually starts today, December the 1st. Um, I do have all my fabric. I have the fabric and the threads already. And once the video is finished, I am actually going to uh, start this tonight. Um, uh, one of the things that I find interesting um, with these magazines is that they literally tell you exactly what size of fabric you need. You know, all of that. And when you look, when I look in charts, they'll tell you what the fabric count is. But these, this says literally a 12 inch by 11 inch piece of 28 count. And I like that because sometimes the calculating and the putting on of the <laughs> chart leaves a little bit to my mind wondering like okay do they mean to turn it this way or do I start stitching it over here um, and so knowing that if I cut the fabric exactly like this my piece is going to fit on there and I'm not going to have to worry and I got a two inch margin because when I calculated it that's what I'm going to end up having it made me so happy so I was like okay I'm going to get my fabric together and all my threads um and so this chart actually calls for DMC, um, and I have all the flosses ready for it. And so all I have to do is sit down tonight once I get done with um, uploading the video and get started stitching on it. The other thing, um, I didn't say this, but I um, stitch on my ink circles every day i am an early morning riser and so um i actually afford myself anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour every morning before while i'm drinking my coffee while i'm getting myself mentally prepared i sit and cross stitch um every morning some mornings it, it may not be that whole time but I put it in stitches every single morning before um, I, I, I do one thing other than uh, before I start cross stitching. And after my devotion is done, then I hit my cross stitching. And it, it has really helped me in my mind being settled before I get started working for the day. Um, and even on the weekends, I find that um, I spend more time um, cross-stitching in the morning on the weekends, only because I have that time. But it really just helps me calm down and not think about what is coming ahead of me for the day. I can just have that peace and quiet um, and let my mind just be free <laughs> before I really start the day. So, um, I mentioned before that I purchased this 10 count cloth for a pattern. Um, and so I am going to be stitching these gingerbread, this gingerbread man on that cloth. And I'm going to be finishing it for my grandchildren. I have three grandchildren. Um, two girls and a little boy and and I am going to start um, a new tradition this year with uh, making them each a cross stitch ornament in the hopes that when they um, grow up and have their own families that those will be things that they can have and, and pass down maybe to their family 
Um, I am looking at getting um, the oldest granddaughter started in cross stitch. Um, I'm, I'm going to get her a starter kit for her Christmas gift this year. But I just thought um, a lot of the traditions um, that I started with my children, um, now that they're grown and on their own in a way, um, have, you know, gone by the wayside. So I... I um, Thought that it was time for me to start a different tra tradition with my granddaughters and my grandson. And so um, I'll be stitching this um, gingerbread man. I can't even think what the name of it is. Um, for them um, to give them as Christmas ornaments um, this year at Christmas time. And I'm going to make that a tradition that every year I stitch them a little um, ornament. Um, several cross stitchers that I've been watching, has they've already been doing that. And I think that is so wonderful. Um, like when your, fam when your child gets their own family, they'll have ornaments that they had when they were a little kid. Um, and I think that's really nice. So... Um, I think that's about all. I actually have quite a bit, um, that I put in my bin, um, but not knowing how long this would actually take, um, I'm actually surprised that I've been able to talk about this for as long as I have. Um, I am very passionate about uh, cross stitch and I really love it um, it has done a lot for me uh, mentally and uh, emotionally uh, this this has been uh, this year has been more than a notion on many accounts um, and being um, in quarantine and self quarantining oh, quarantining um it has really helped me um, keep my emotions in check and uh, stay focused, stay grounded. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I uh, hope that it, it does that for everyone. Um, I uh, wish that I had known about cross-stitching much younger much earlier in my life. Um, and I'm actually going to, that's why I'm going to uh, teach my granddaughters um, how to do it. Um, I think my mom didn't know. And so therefore she couldn't teach me. Um, and that is why I didn't teach my daughters or sons, um, but I can correct that now. Um, when they look at my cross stitching, they think it's beautiful. Um, not that they've been wanting to pick it up and to do it, but they think it's nice um, and it's pretty. Um, I, I don't think they realize how many how many hours go into making a cross stitch piece. Um, but the fact that they enjoy it, um, and that, uh, they enjoy it because I enjoy it, um, really makes me happy. Um, so I will continue on doing what makes me happy. I am also doing a lot of sewing, um, and, uh, like I said, I'm multi -craftual. So there might be times where you see um, some quilting or I'm not really doing very many ceramics anymore um, because I'm sheltering in place like I'm supposed to. Um, but I'm actually uh, getting ready to pick up a different crafting hobby. Um, I'm going to be taking some lessons. And so as that all develops, I'm sure I'll be sharing it here. Um, on YouTube. I just want to thank you for your time. Um, I know that time is very valuable. Um, and so I thank you for your time 
that you have given to watch my video. Um, and I hope you come back again soon. Thanks. Have a good evening.